How does someone know that the person that they're dating is the one? How did I know? I, I just wanted to marry her. I wanted her to be the mother of my children. I wanted to spend my life with her. It was that simple. I think it was the fact that he loved me so much, but he loved God even more than me. I feel like he had things in right order. He loved God first and foremost. He loved me and would put me above his own needs. And then he was my best friend. Yeah, who else would I want to do life with than my best friend? Hey guys, welcome back to the Lila Rose podcast. Today is going to be fun. We're going to have in the studio two friends of mine, a beautiful couple, Matt and Cameron Frad. You may have heard of Matt Frad from Pints with Aquinas or Cameron Frad from her podcast, Among the Lilies. They're an amazing couple doing amazing things in the world. And we're going to get into, yes, their story, their relationship advice, parenting advice, homeschooling, all of the things. You know, I look at them and I see what they've built with their family. They've got four kids, been married 19 years, and there's just a lot of wisdom to glean from them. And the conversation also includes a lot of band Banter. It's very friendly banter, but it's maybe a little bit of a different tack than some of the more serious podcasts we've done, but I hope you'll enjoy. All right, so today we have a treat. We have two Frads in the studio. We have the husband of Cameron Frad. Who you may know from Among the Lilies. Oh. Yes, Among the Lilies, which I was leaving our house today and talking to one of your many fans, our sitter, who loves your show. It's an amazing show. And then, Matt, you have a show, I think. Some yes. people, uh, what's the name it's of it again? Pints with Aquinas, okay. I think. Okay, Pints with Aquinas. Um, okay, so you guys are, tell me, I want to start with, we're going to do a lot in this interview. We're going to talk about your love story, how you guys met. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, especially from Cameron's point of view, okay. since you, you know. Laughed. You laughed. Okay. <laughs> and, then we're, and then we're going to hear about parenting. We're going to talk about whatever we, wherever we go with this. There's lots of interesting things. We have things. really good editors. So we have we will get really good editors over there. So, um, but first, I'll start with you, Cameron. Where are you from? East Coast and South is okay. what I always say. I moved a lot as a kid. So I was born in Massachusetts, South Carolina, Virginia, Louisiana, Texas. I graduated from school in Texas, so I kind of claim that a little more. Um, did missionary work with Net Ministries in Canada, and then uh, eventually did Net Ireland, where Matt and I met yeah. from East Coast. And, and then you have kids together, yes. of course. We do. Yep. They all look just like him. Okay. So. <laughs> Is that true? That's too when they bad. Were born, for sure. It's very unfortunate. No, they're really oh, good so looking. Lovely. Kids. You're a good looking. Yeah, and you have how many like kids? We have four. Okay. Yeah, we have four. And then kids. you also host Among the Lilies. I do, yes. And what do you talk about on that show? Uh, so my catchphrase is um, Among the Lilies is for ladies who are tired of pretending and are ready to be real. Mm. And when we had our fourth child, I broke and fell apart. He was a preemie, he was a NICU baby, he was on a feeding tube for a long time. And I felt like, I think Jim, is it Jim Gaffigan? Is he the one? No. Yeah, yeah, Jim yeah. Gaffigan has a joke. If, if you want to know what it's like to have four babies, just imagine you're drowning and someone hands you a baby, something yeah. to that effect. So that, that was me. I was drowning with three babies and then I was given a sick one and I did not sleep. Um, he kept almost dying. And, um, and then I, I had good, beautiful friends that came around me and helped me get help. And I remember trying to listen to a podcast and this is a while ago. So like, if you were around, I would have loved your podcast, mm -hmm. but this is back before I feel like there were many. And I tried a couple. Um, he was born in 2014, so this is like 2015. And I remember looking for a good Catholic podcast or even a Christian podcast, and they were horrible. They were really bad. Like, I remember this one I listened to. It was women, and they were sharing, like, sometimes I'm not the best wife. Like, today, <laughs> Only I, once didn't, a month. <laughs> I didn't sweep my floors. Ooh, and, and I was just angry, and I wanted to punch them in the face. And I remember just being like, God, why is no one being real? Like, these women are not helping anyone. They're being extremely fake, and they're making me, who's, like, struggling with depression and mm. um, life and feel like a failure— um, and then I had some friends like Christina Everett and um, she's amazing. Yeah, Sarah Swafford mm -hmm. and some it's other amazing. friends encouraged me. And I felt the Lord say, you have the gift of gab and there's a microphone literally mm -hmm. in this room. So just do it. So I started it just to talk. And I feel like it was like my therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. And do you remember the but, first name we thought of? Mark Hart yes, suggested. Mark Hart, yeah. We're like, what's like a name just about being real? And he said, what about vodka in the linen closet? Okay. It was almost my podcast. That's clo <laughs> very close to Among the Lilies. Yeah, same same, same, same vein. And I didn't <laughs> drink, drink vodka. vodka. But you have a NICU baby. You just were handed the fourth child, you know, a blessing from God, but you're in total chaos. And you're like, now's a great time to start a podcast. Yeah. 
Yeah. Pretty and much. how did you do that with four kids and a baby that's so sick and in NICU? So I never learned how to edit. I still well, don't. That's, a, that's you know that is a, a interesting silver lining right there. I was just, just like put it out I'm there. I'm just going to say raw. whatever and whatever comes out, great. Praise so you, Jesus. you just upload um, voice notes on your phone. Upload to the. Yeah, I didn't even know I could do app. that. I just use Matt's microphone, nice. and so I feel like I record less now because I try to do YouTube once yeah. I um, move to Student Mill. So I record less. I need to, I need to just do the voice thing on my phone because whenever I get passionate about something. Yeah. Which is often. <laughs> that's like, that's go definitely off. real. You that's... should love because the microphones are so good on phones yeah. today. <laughs> Look at you. You just you can actually get a little plug in for your you phone. Can... Yeah, that's you basically that. a high quality microphone that you could literally carry in your purse. Yeah. So when inspiration strikes. It's like all of a sudden mum's out in the back porch ranting, leave her alone, kids. Yes. <laughs> She's, don't She's, she has to she talk. There might edit. be a scream in the background, but that's a Maybe. raw and authentic podcast yes. right there. Yes. <clears throat> I may drop words that aren't appropriate, but that's okay. You don't do that. I did open an episode with that. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. That's okay. It was that's fun. a that's a. It was a loving term of endearment. I'm pretty sure what you Which said word was, was it? What's up? B Are you allowed wow. to say that? Well, she asked. We've never said that word in my Isn't podcast, that what you but said? I expected yeah, that. that. I, I expected <laughs> that. Friends. I think it's because I said to you, like, how come all the women, whenever they record, whenever if they you are talk, listening with children right now, we in apologize. Your car, I don't know how this it episode is going want, to go. Well, we will. I had no promises. But it seems like whenever women give a talk in like Christian context, they would always go, "What's hello, ladies?" ladies. Yeah. Right? And yeah. she's like, "What's up?" <laughs> all right. Well, so, just to be different, you know, just to be different. Okay, so when I said it, though, everyone was super offended. Do you say it? No, no, no. <laughs> Remember, Jason Everett said that you could say whatever because you you were at some conference with a bunch of bishops and maybe a cardinal or something, and know. you said something. And Jesus is like, anyone else saying that? Everybody would have been in trouble, but you get away with it. Okay, what? Well, don't you don't have to say He's the Australian. word? No, just spell it. What, or st say the first know, letter. Of the word. What letter? Well, I'm just. You were at a uh, conference. There's with, no way it was to explain a, it was a without really okay. getting into it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And you you won't want me to. I'll tell you off. Okay. <laughs> if you want to know what the word was, you can join the Patreon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we will put that on the yeah. Patreon page yes. for our patrons. Okay. And it's fall. It's time to sit down with your steaming cup of hot coffee and read your favorite book under a warm blanket. What hot coffee are you going to choose? The best coffee for you to choose is the gourmet, delicious, organic Seven Weeks Coffee. Sevenweekscoffee.com is my coffee company of choice. They have the best roast. This is ethically sourced coffee. And best of all, Seven Weeks Coffee is not only the most delicious cup of hot steaming coffee that you could want, it also is a company that gives 10% of all its proceeds to pro-life pregnancy centers. So 10% of all the proceeds of Seven Weeks Coffee goes directly to help moms and babies in need. So today, go to sevenweekscoffee.com, order your favorite roast, order a subscription. You can do that too. Get the most delicious coffee directly to your door and use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. That's sevenweekscoffee.com and you can use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. And then Matt, you are, give us your background where you're from. Then we're going to go to the point where you okay. met each other. But also just for folks that aren't yet familiar yeah. with the Joe Rogan of Catholic podcasting. Yeah. I'm from Australia and I grew up there and uh, was agnostic or atheistic in my teenage years. At the age of 17, I had a profound conversion to Jesus Christ and so embraced the Catholic faith of my, my youth. After that, I just wanted to talk about our Lord. And so I eventually served as a missionary in Canada with a particular group and then in Ireland. And that's how I met my wife. And you then, when you, after you met Cameron, which we're going to talk about in a minute, you ended on going on to write books. You were the anti-porn expert for, well, you still expert. are. I don't know about an expert, but I did. But you wrote books on that. Yeah. Everyone says that about him behind his back. Yeah. Are you he's he's not, he doesn't like that. Well, I don't think I am. I just, okay. I like, I like thinking about it a lot. Yeah, uh, you were a very, you've been a very important speaker yeah. and writer. On so I, the I spoke, I spoke to about 50 to 70,000 people every year for the last, wow. yeah, for about 10 years straight wow. on pornography. Whoa. What you were the go-to. <laughs> wow. I think even just in the Christian world, like, I yeah, I know you are. I think he is. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, he is. So I did he that is. and I loved it. It was very great. It was beautiful to do. And, um. I don't know if it's because it's like a very difficult topic. It to be, is. It's like abortion. Right? It I'm is. sure it's to be very in dark. that topic constantly, you're dealing with a lot the of fallout, you know. And so um, I was doing my master's degree in philosophy, and I wanted to start a podcast where I could just kind of talk about 
Catholic philosophy, Thomas Aquinas' thought, because I was doing a master's degree in Thomistic philosophy. And so I started a podcast called P- <laughs> Pints with Aquinas. I didn't, didn't nearly forget the name of my podcast. <laughs> and um, and that kind of developed from just me kind of like looking at different Summa articles to now long-form discussions. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and then at some point you, when you were both doing that, you met each other. Mm-hmm. So how did you meet, and Matt, how did you make your first move? <laughs> do you want me to do it? Yeah, do it. So, uh, well, <laughs> okay, permission. here you go. So we served with Net Ministries. Give me the real truth. Yeah. Oh, I will. Uh, that's all we know how to do, I think. Okay. You that's can good. correct me if it's not real, but uh, I, we served with Net Ministries of Canada, and this is back in the day where... You know, the internet was... We're talking early 2000s. Yeah, the internet's humming along, but they're going to send you pamphlets and brochures and packages, you know. So I reached out to Net Canada. They sent me a package, and I opened up this pamphlet, and I'm looking through it, and there's, like, these young missionaries, and there was this really pretty missionary on the front cover, and that was her. And so then after I served a year in Canada, they wanted to send a pilot team to Ireland, and so Are they... Are saying Ireland, yeah. not yeah. Ireland? Yeah, okay. The Got island it. of Ireland. Got it. And they chose missionaries from previous net years and put us on a team together. And I knew that Cameron would be on that team. And I sent out an email to my new team members and ignored everybody who responded except this one. And Saying, um, hey, you want to get drinks? It was yeah. Like a- you you blow I don't know. <laughs> No, that was MS, MSN. That oh, was after. So that you after. asked Cameron out by oh, asking all the... No, you don't date on that. Oh. So we yes, you can't date on it. It's like focus. Is, uh, is that right? No, um, it's stricter, I think. Wow. Yeah. It, well, do you know? I don't know. So you weren't allowed so. to date, but you were like, I still want to go just, on a know, sort of appointment with, her, with Just to get to know her a bit, Cameron. maybe. And then, she, we, then we kind of we came together as a team, and um, they we just really liked each other. Okay. <laughs> So if you weren't allowed to and date... And by like, I don't mean, I don't even mean physically attracted. I just mean, I really think you're cool. Yeah. I like so, talking to you. Yeah. I but of that, course you were physically attracted. I don't know if I was at front at first. There's a lot of pretty women. Just like there's a lot of Yeah, there's dudes, a lot of handsome you know? guys just, on the team. But it, I don't think there mm-hmm. was, for me at least, mm-hmm. it wasn't this like, oh my goodness, he's the like cutest sparks. most. Yes. Mm-hmm. There was moments of that. But I also, with Net, I've seen it handled really well when someone's had an attraction and they choose not to act on it, mm-hmm. put the mission of the team above it. And then afterwards, get married and go on, and it's lovely. And I've seen other people where they kind of date or like flirt with each other, and it ruins the mission. It's it's kind of hard for people who haven't served in a mm-hmm. team like this to understand. It yeah. might seem weird. Why couldn't you date on a team? But you're living in close proximity, and your primary mission is to evangelize yes. young people and tell them about Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. If you take your eyes off of the mission and onto Susie or John or whatever, it it creates weird dynamics within a team environment. That that that's that, what, that's that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's I, I want to I think it's really interesting what you said and what you both are saying, which is that you both were attractive people, but you didn't necessarily feel immediate sparks or physical attraction to each other, which I think is... Well, I actually don't even know if that's true, because I think about when we were in that that pub in Ottawa, Mm. we were playing darts, and I remember at one point thinking everyone else in the pub disappeared except for Matt, Mm. and I was, like, embarrassed. So I had moments of that, but I wasn't going to let that... Take over. So I think we were attracted to each other, but it wasn't this, we have to act on it now. It's like, okay, let's just put that aside. Yes. Yeah. I think that's probably how everybody thinks. Like, I'm in California. There's lots of pretty people everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you don't walk around going, oh, you're just like, oh, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. He looks like a handsome dude. But whatever. It's like when you kind of get to know the person that you Mm -hmm. start to be drawn in. Well, and I think that's the right way to respond. But I think in today's world, with the way people are... I think the life experiences they have, things like pornography, et cetera, I think the step between acknowledging someone's attractiveness and then moving into maybe intense interest or lust is unfortunately, I think, a short mm. a short path for I a lot of people. Yeah. So, But it sounds like that was not your story. You started as friends. I you remember, had this friendship. I, I remember saying to my friend Todd, who was on our team, I said, I don't think I'm attracted to Cameron, but I want to be attracted to her because she's so great. Like, I really like her. So then, when did when did that when when you left Net? Then you called her up and you, you said, the story? "Okay, so there's a quote from C.S. Lewis and Matt at the beginning of training lent me this book, and it says, Love is friendship caught on fire.' And that had been my prayer all year that I would experience that with mm-hmm. someone, whether it be my ex boyfriend that I broke up with right before I went on Net Ireland, mm-hmm. or someone else." Um, Maybe, Matt, but I just didn't know. And we went, I remember uh, right before we left Ireland, it was the night before everybody on our team was flying home. And um, and I remember saying to one of the girls on my team, the thought of never seeing Matt again breaks my heart. Mm. 
but I don't like him like that. I was convinced I didn't like him like that. <laughs> You're like, even, he's like a little brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I would really him, miss my little brother. I loved him like a brother. And, um, but I had been praying that. And I went back to Texas. He went back to Australia. We were talking. Sometimes we'd be on the phone and it was amazing. And it was like, we're going to get married. And then other times it's like, I don't like you anyhow. He's going to be a friar at the renewal. I'm going with Sisters of Life or something else, you know? Um, and it was real. Um, it was hard. It, it, dating was very hard. It was before there was FaceTime, and we're in different <laughs> countries. Um, and I went to go visit Matt in Australia. And um, should I just tell that a little bit? Do, do what, what do you want? Whatever you like. Yes, okay. go for it. The well, truth. The <laughs> truth. <laughs> the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Um, okay, so I flew to Australia, and we had this amazing, beautiful day where we went for a rosary walk first thing in the morning, watched the sunrise. Matt packed a picnic lunch. It was amazing, beautiful. Uh, we went on, like, a um, river cruise around Brisbane Harbor. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. No, you, you could... That's perfect. Pick up. Okay, your yes. turn now. I said I was about to say ferry, and then you say cruise, so you got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we went to a place where you got to hold a koala yes. and see the kangaroos. Feed kangaroos. It was pretty amazing. And then we took a drive up to this lovely lookout over Brisbane, and I forget the name of it, but anyone watching from Brisbane would know what it is. And I we have a lot of Brisbane. Brisbane, probably you probably do. More sure than you I think. They do. Yeah. I and hope I, so. <laughs> I leaned in to kiss her, and oh, I, was, wow. I was denied. Wow. Wait, were you even, you were dating at this point, of no, course. We no, we weren't really. We were still trying this to figure out what we were. Kiss. Well, you say why. Because okay, so the reason I said no and I didn't let him kiss me is because I said we have two weeks to figure out what we are. I love you as my brother. And there's times where I think I'm attracted to you. And then there's other times that I don't. So I wow. don't know. And I want to have strong boundaries here. And he got very upset. And I felt bad. But wow. I was like, no, I didn't get very upset. So you I just, weren't even sure I you wasn't were very attracted upset, to him. But when you said that to me, I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to be a priest. I don't, yeah. Okay. So I felt like you put a wall up and mm -hmm. maybe had some distance. Yeah. Because prior to that, I feel like there was moments that he'd look at me and I swear he saw through my heart mm -hmm. and like saw a part of me that I didn't even want to let anyone see. And I think he saw a part of me that um, God knows, but no one else knows. Mm -hmm. And it was embarrassing. Um, you wrote a song about it. And one of the lines in the song is... Um, oh, Wait, can you sing it? No, we don't want to do that. Oh, please. Please. No, I'm definitely not going to sing it. And Matt. I don't even know if you should say Matt. it. Not going to happen. Can I, can I, can I ask just the line? Lila, I'm one not line. here for your views and subscribers. <laughs> I'm here for mine. I'm not singing it. Uh, yours <laughs> might appreciate it. You, have you sung on your podcast before? Uh, I, I, I think I've sung occasionally. All right, there's, they loved it. Actually, we have one of your fans in the studio. Did you like it when Matt sang on the podcast? Just say yes. Yes. Yeah, it's great. He loved it. So, so then what happened, buddy? So for our wedding. Well, what was we the lie? You don't need to sing it. What was okay. the lie? Yeah. So we had a CD that was love. Actually, if anyone's watching and you have the CD, I want it. It's called Love Songs for Cammy, and it, he wrote all these songs Wait, for why me. Why would someone else have his CD? Because we because gave, we it, gave out it out as gifts at the wedding. At the wedding. Wow. Yeah. But I did, because we moved so many countries, and I don't this have was before digital. This yeah. is on a. This it's is on, on a disc. A, yeah. I would love to get it. One of these days. You what a gift to, to give away at your wedding. I know. It was a beautiful what? gift. But the line is, um, you bite your lip and shy away. Um, and then something. I forget what it was. Then this Do you remember? No, 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 it's so good. Do you remember the line? <laughs> um, but it's, I, I it's that part. Wait, 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 you this look. This is getting way too intimate <laughs> for me. I can't, I you can't look, do this. Oh, the line's so good. But it's something <laughs> no, like, you look at me. Kangaroos are great. Stop. You bite your lip and shy away. But I want to pull you close into me. Do you look at me and I see your heart. You wouldn't realize this. It was lovely. But they can scratch. Could you hold on? Just to clarify. Maybe Matt has some professionalism here. Um, just to clarify for a second, this CD had original love songs yeah, that right. Matt Six wrote songs. for you, yes. yeah. recorded for you. Yes. And, and uh, you know, it is sweet, I guess, that you gave it away at your love. Why would you give that away at your wedding and not keep that? We, we had one. We, we had multiple. You've had copies. Yeah, but, but you lost just the other been lost over the years. Wow. We've been married a really long time. So that's what we're saying. How many years you have you been married? Yeah. 17 years. 17 years married. So we've got to find that CD. Yes, I would love to have that CD again. Go love the, songs for Cam. The Cam or Cammy? Cammy. It was Cammy. C A M I. C A M M I. If anyone is good at eBay finds or yes, there you go. Who's <laughs> selling this? <laughs> CD. <laughs> How much money would you give someone who could find love right. songs for Cammy the original? No, she's actually asking you. It wasn't rhetorical. <laughs> I feel like your parents or my parents should have. This All right, CD. the Lila Rose podcast will give hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yes. You I'll can recover hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred dollars. If you can recover love songs for Cammy, yes. C A M M I. E. 
E O M M I E. It's Sweet. a blue CD. That's so lovely, Matt, that no, you did that, and that's the cover so... was blue. No, nope. that's a different CD you're thinking about. Oh, oh well. okay. This one had you and me on it, and it was black and white. Wow. Oh, yes, it was a sticker that he put the stickers on the CDs. Yeah. I forgot. That's that. very Anyways. sweet. Okay. So I had I had these intimate moments, but I just didn't want to confuse things. I was like, I know that I love this guy as my brother in Christ. But we were both talking with religious orders at the time. Do you understand? Wow. So it wasn't it wasn't that now I didn't... for that we have a lot of Catholics who listen. We have a lot of Protestants. Sure. We have a lot of non even non religious. So we have a lot of so you were considering religious orders, meaning you were discerning whether you'd be a priest and yes, a nun, basically. Right. And so, you're also kind of dating. Exactly. And that, very. I mean, it's, it's not. It's, 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 it wasn't that we <laughs> weren't so attracted to each other. It was that, okay. well, obviously she's attractive. Well, she attractive. wasn't sure, Matt. Well, she, she wasn't said sure. It. I was definitely okay. attracted to her, but I wasn't sure if I, we wanted to confuse things while I'm in conversations with her. Well, I think going to Australia and walking along the beach. Oh, I was getting mixed messages. And holding I koalas. I know. <laughs> that does not sound like discerning the, koala the priesthood did poop to me. In your hand. The koala did poop in my hand. I okay. didn't even that. care because it was adorable and it was a koala. <laughs> And have you ever held koala? Poop? I haven't, but that I mean, oh, not a. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever held, held koala? I would. I've poop? never held a koala or their excrement, but I would love to hold a koala. It was awesome. That sounds so. Well, I feel cute. like you got to get to the bishop bit okay. quick. Okay, okay. So okay. fast forward, and we are uh, so same visit, but now we're in South Australia, where Matt's from, and we go to have tea with his bishop. And Matt's one of, one of Matt's main sources of fellowship was his bishop. Wow. So he calls him Bish. They were very close friends. Um, Things more... are a little informal in Australia. So it was a small wow. country town. So our Bishop Eugene Hurley, wonderful. Holy Amazing fella. beauty. But it, it, I feel like the intimacy he had with him was more like you would have with just a normal a parish real... priest, right? A real uh, father. So we're sitting there and he's talking about how beautiful it is to be in love, all this stuff. We're having tea and biscuits. <laughs> the bishop was saying this. The bishop saying this. <clears throat> and in my head, I'm thinking... Is Matt telling the bishop we're in love? Because I don't know. I'm still not sure, but I'm smiling and nodding because that's what you do when you're having tea with the bishop. Um, and then he asks if he he's like, pray. just give each other a kiss. And you're like, okay, fine. You're no, the bishop. it's even better than that. Oh, oh sorry. I'll yeah, just let you talk. Better. <laughs> not to build it up, but it's better than that. So he asks if he can pray over us. And so we stand up and the bishop puts his hand uh, over us, both his hands, one on my head, one on Matt's head, leads a beautiful prayer. And I pray, Lord, let me know. And so that C.S. Lewis quote, love is friendship caught on fire. I'm praying that too. I'm like, Lord, if I'm supposed to marry this man, let me know. Um, He finishes the prayer and then he kneels down before us and says, will you two pray over me? So Matt and I are standing there and we put our hands on the bishop and I swear my heart just ignited. Like in that moment, I know like it was just like I felt my heart like beating and just... I don't know. It just felt like it exploded. And I just felt like the Lord was saying, yes, this is the man you're going to spend the rest of your life with. This is who you're going to marry. It's real love. I desire this. And I remember praying, okay, Lord, you know me. And I feel like you're saying this, but could you make it clear? Because I'm one of those people he needs to hit over the head with a two by four. Um, And then the bishop, we say amen. And the bishop opens his eyes, looks at Matt and says, "Um, Matt, just as we need holy priests, and brothers, we need good, holy husbands and fathers. And that was my confirmation. I'm wow. Like, I'm going to marry this guy. And then the bishop got up and then Matt got down on one knee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was good, though. Uh, what happened next? Uh, we went and made out in a car. Wow. Okay. It was terrific. <laughs> Chastely. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, we were I, flirting with okay. the edges of Jess and Rob. We, were, stop. Bit. No, we I, were excited. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was passionate. But it was appropriate. The, the wall up of, like, I'm not going to kiss you because I don't want to confuse things, that wall came down, I think, is what You were ready to kiss Yes. No, but it was Chase. I'm being sorry. And but it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And was I mean, I'm sure there's, there's, there's obviously a debate about is there any, is it possible to kiss before you're married? So I have strong Should views about it, but I'm a hypocrite because I didn't okay. live by them. Oh, really? So my views are that you shouldn't be engaging in an activity in which your body is physiologically preparing for intercourse. I think that's a good yeah, rule good of thumb. Thing. It's a tough one, though, yeah. when you're in love with someone. And not Very really tough. Good. Yes. Anyway, anyway, so, so then that's where the little peck on the cheek is more yes. the so way she, to go. <laughs> she went so after we kissed and it was just glorious, wonderful time. But we're not going to get into it because <laughs> it makes me embarrassed. 
And then Cameron went Not embarrassing to... enough to want to I know, share it with the podcast. No, I can talk about making it out in the car, but I can't talk about the kind of lyrics I wrote for you in a song. Really? I don't know why. Know. Come on, can Max. sort it out in the car. It shows section. a lack of willingness to let your sensitivity out. Maybe. So anyway, Cameron goes back to Texas, and I'm in Australia, and then I went and visited her. And just wait, wait, wait. Sorry, oh. really quick. Before Cameron leaves Australia, you are you are a couple. Yes, you are boyfriend, oh, girlfriend. We, oh, definitely. Are you we, talking about marriage go. at this point? So you point? know what's crazy? I met his grandmother on her birthday, and she gave me a jewelry box of hers. And um, and Matt's it's Matt's mom's mom, and they were very close. And um, and it was just beautiful. I was like, thank you so much. And she was very prayerful she always had rosary beads and she was just this beautiful woman and by the time i got home and wrote a thank you note and mailed it to her she died wow and it was just like i feel like she knew this is taking so many unexpected wow turns, i know but interview. i just i feel like it's it was really beautiful mm. i feel like we were aware and i think even spending time with your family like i feel like the lord just he knew yeah he, he, the, he set it up so yeah that. so i was only there for two weeks but i feel like i had certain certainty in that time but still trusting the lord's will but i flew back to mm. texas mm. yeah i so just want to derail the whole interview and then we made out in texas <laughs> that didn't happen but i just i don't know why it's making me okay so anyway then what happened was uh i went and visited her for two weeks and it was just terrific i went back to australia bought an engagement ring got a job in texas and moved there wow. in december 2005 what job was that doesn't matter. It was a youth minister. <laughs> youth ministry job. And then proposed a month later. Yeah. So when I Made told my happen. friends I was engaged, they were like, you have a boyfriend? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, there's this guy. He just moved from Australia. He was like my little brother. Yeah. No. Yep. Love him greatly. Why do you keep saying little? I'm sorry. She's older than me. <laughs> I, no, but, but um, I am. the way Cameron don't was talking earlier wow. about, like, she isn't sure if she liked you. Like, right. it yeah, kind of gave fair. me the vibe of, you know, yeah. Cameron's the mature, sophisticated kind of... I was two years that, older, so maybe oh, you I was are a little, little older. Okay. Yeah, two years. Thanks, so. yeah. It's a temperament thing. But too, I but think. I also I joke, and I don't know if this is true or not. But I joke about my nose ring we got in Ireland um, we together. Were together, yep. <laughs> I actually just realized you have a little nose tattoo. Yeah, a little nose ring. My mom said I would never get a real job again. No one would hire me. See, I didn't even notice it. Why you bring that up? I don't know. There was a point. I forgot what it was now. You and I, because you and I because had a couple of beers in Ireland. Wait, this is when you were net missionaries. This is uh, net. Okay. Right. okay. Net ends. All right. Oh. Everyone goes home. So we, now you get the nose ring. We go ring get when about three and a half ends. beers. Yes. Wow. And you go, what if I got a nose ring? And I'm like, yes. And then we went down and they they put that thing through your nose and I nearly punched that woman Matt, in the face. Matt, is this when you got your tattoo? I wish you hadn't brought that Damn up. It. I, oh, is that a secret? I, I'm very embarrassed. Uh, no, I got this a, a while ago. When did I get this? 2000 and... I actually didn't even know you had a tattoo. I just oh, made that I, totally okay, I have strong out. views about tattoos as well. I think they're What's so your... boring and lame. You shouldn't get one. I regret getting this <laughs> okay, one. Okay, so but you got that tattoo in Ireland? No. no. Okay. Yes, you got it later. But it was oh. years after. Okay. Oh, you did get it in Ireland. But you don't think people there. should get tattoos? People can do whatever they want. Okay. I just think, you don't think tattoos are never as interesting as you think they are. Get scars instead. Scars mm. are tattoos, but with a better story. How how would you go and get a Just scar? Just start fighting people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Like we already said, it's fall. It's time to dress up and wear that warm, cozy sweater and get that new cozy sweater dress and wear those new cute earrings, whatever it is going to be. CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com has got your fall capsule clothing. They've got the basics. They've got the pants, the tops, the long sleeve shirts, the cute sweaters, the dresses, all of it. I just ordered a great pair of jeans from CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. You're going to love this company because it's capsule clothing, so you can simplify your closet but also make it more sophisticated. And the price point is great. This is a company that supports pregnancy centers and the pro-life movement. Again, CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com is a company that shares your values, has adorable clothes, and you can use the code LILAROSE at checkout for 20% off your order. So so then you get engaged. And then how long till you get engaged did you get married? Seven months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So within a month quick. of him so living in the United States. i got a good United States. how I proposed to her. Yeah. Let's not, hear not it. the specific, like, Lovely part. Why so, not, Matt? But more than. Okay, so from the time them? that we, like, so there was less than a year from the time we started dating till okay. we got married. It was short. And did he sing, did you get sing a song to Cameron? No, don't, I did, you did. don't do that. Did. You did. Talk about you it. Tell, tell us, Cameron. No, no, anyway, this so all the bloody yeah, usual is I, uh, I called my I mate in Australia. Oh, yeah, that, this is the prelude to this song. Because I, I had my engagement ring. 
And I had a good friend who said that he prayed that the Lord would give him three very specific signs. And within that day, the Lord did. And I thought, well, gee, there's a template to follow. So I asked the Lord for the same signs. Doesn't matter what they were, but I didn't get them. Mm. About whether or not to, to buy marry, the ring. Wow. No, to, because I had the ring. I moved to America wow. with the ring. And I, I, you know, sometimes you wonder what the Lord would say to you. I didn't hear a voice or anything. But in Australia, there's a saying, it's quite insulting, you're old enough and ugly enough to do this yourself. And I felt like the Lord was like, you're old enough and ugly enough to feed. Do you want to marry her? I'm like, yes. He's like, well, bloody marry Right, because we hyper-spiritualize so some what of I, these decisions. I think that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. So I called my mate, Mark Bennett, finer man there never has been. And I said, Mark, I'm going to propose, I guess, but I'm just really scared. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a wrong decision here. And his exact words were, what the bloody hell are you waiting for, you idiot? She's better than you anyway. You should, <laughs> you should propose before she figures that out. Wow. <laughs> so that night I proposed. Lock it down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the proposal included an original song by Matt Fratt. No, to, this one was a Ben Harper there, song. Is there any Forever. Oh. Yeah. Okay, he it's didn't a, go original And then we this. made out. We didn't. No, no. <laughs> it's just it was, say, every time you bring that up, I'm going to do it and make it out. Of, yeah. You're just saying we made, made out. out. I'm just yeah. like... <laughs> No, so okay. so the funny thing is, I was a youth minister as well, and I was in jeans and a t-shirt, no makeup, hair and a ponytail. Mm. You didn't know it was coming. Definitely didn't know, and I didn't think you could well, get the nails. Like the nails that. were not done. The nails, and I'm not like a do nail yeah. person, but I I would do my hair and yeah. put on makeup or at least a dress, something. Um, but I go over and he sings this beautiful song, and he's sitting on his couch with his guitar, <laughs> and it's uh, yeah. forever. Just by a, ben lovely it's a lovely song. Lovely song. Then what happened? What are the words? What are the words? Can, can he sing a little no line need. for us? Then what happened? One line, Matt. After Come on. That, what happened then? No. One line. Just one line. It's not going to happen. Just It'll, one line. Come on, Matt. Not going to do it. Matt, you sing on your podcast. Why won't you sing? Mine. He really doesn't sing. You're trying to stunt my views, <laughs> or maybe protect I'll them. I'll keep talking about us making our lives. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let's, so then he sings this lovely song, and I remember thinking that would be a really good song to propose to, but not thinking that he's proposing. And then he said, "Let's go for a walk to the church." So we walked to a church down the street, and they have this beautiful Sacred Heart garden, and there's all these roses and a uh, lovely statue of the Sacred Heart, and we had a strong devotion to mm. Christ's Sacred Heart. And um, there was candles lit, and he leads this amazing long prayer. And I remember thinking, if he doesn't propose, I'm punching him in the face. <laughs> well, because I also had a bunch of candles lit. Yes, I was going to say, so they were talk about candles. toying were... with a woman's heart if I didn't yes, propose. Yes, I'm like, so, who doesn't propose? So the roses and candles weren't already at the church. These were when the, the roses, the roses were. were already okay. there, but well, all the nice. candles. I had, I had oh. lit, and then had someone watch over them. That's a fire while hazard. I, in exactly. <laughs> He's lucky to yeah. in the heat of the, the day. It's like during in the Texas day. Too. Oh <laughs> it was very dry grass, actually. It was quite inappropriate. Gotta, the more I think gotta, of it. Gotta get that and done. He led a big, out. beautiful prayer, and I just said, "Your will be done, Lord. Amen." <laughs> and anyway, then he yeah. got down on one knee and proposed, yeah. and it was lovely. I said yes, obviously. Yeah. And then 19 years later, mm-hmm. here you are. Crikey! So, do you think getting down on one knee is? A really beautiful and good tradition that men should do. And I don't this know is a where question the for both of you. The tradition comes from, I but I, but it. I suppose it it's just a physical way of honoring my beautiful bride. Yeah, I thought it was very humbling, and yeah, I, I love it too. I, what That's what I, a Twitter debate. No, I like therapy. it very much. I, I, People I think saying it's, we don't I, do. If you're, do the are you pro it? Oh, I'm pro kneeling for sure. Well, I'm very against women. My husband kneeled. Either proposing or initiating the conversation. I think the, the man, woman shouldn't propose. Is what you're saying? That's, I think. I think that's. I fair. mean, look, it's like tattoos. I have strong opinions, but I'm not going to hold you to them. But I do mm-hmm. think that um, a man should put himself in the position to get rejected. He should love mm-hmm. his woman enough to not have to put her in that position. Why? Why is that something only men should do versus? Women. Because men are stronger than women. In what way? Both, every way. They're wow. stronger emotionally, they're stronger physically. And I don't think you, and I think because you love your wife, you want to to kneel down and to ask her this question. I mean, you're in a very vulnerable position there. It's funny you say that because Lisa Cotter was on the podcast and oh, she yeah, was saying that Lisa. women are stronger emotionally and men are stronger physically. Okay. I think it depends on the individual person of as course, well. Of course. Um, but I think overall, I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. And I think that it also depends on the individual, like, and also depends on the couple. So I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of the stereotypical, um, the women's like this, the guys like this are reversed on us. I feel mm-hmm. like I tend to be more in certain aspects. Um, Can you beat him on wrestling? I used to, like, beat him real wrestling. I was captain of the right wrestling team. This is wow. a very, again, another left turn. So my wife was captain of the wrestling team. 
And I so did we not would know actually that. That full on break out question. into wrestling at okay. parties sometimes. Yeah, it's and I was in a very awkward position, Lila, because if I lost. Wait, you I, would wrestle at hang parties on, yeah. on, a party trick. If I lost, I, I really... sucked. And if I won, I sucked. True. It's a lose lose. So it's a very awkward situation. So, which, but Cameron would win, it sounds like. Sometimes I would. Wow. Yeah, I was... think she remembers things the way she Were you married yet? Were you married at this point? Hold on, you're right. Oh, we would never wrestle unmarried. That would have been. No, I think we did actually, but not like that. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened? We after just you wrestled? make out at parties. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we were, that's so not awkward. true. That's not true. No. Okay, do you so, still wrestle? Here's the thing: I get we aggressive don't. sometimes, and especially if Matt says something that offends me, and I just okay. kind of would like push him. And Does that happen a lot, back. Cameron? It used to early okay. years of marriage. I have like health issues now, mm-hmm. and my bones dislocate, so Aww. it doesn't work as well now. But um, back then, we used to, and he'd say something, and I just full on. But my thing was, he didn't know the right. He was. Mm-hmm. Bigger and stronger than me. We'd be different weight classes, um, but I knew the wrestling. You knew the skills. I had the skills. So I would get him. Like I remember this one time, I had him in a great hold. I'm like, "There's no way he's getting out of this." (laughs) And I had him, and he stood up. And I was like, "Well, this isn't fair." So I still have him in the hold. You're like hanging on. But I'm like across his shoulders, and he's just standing up. And I'm like carrying you. We are definitely different weight classes. Would you have guessed that she was captain of the wrestling? I would not have guessed that. I would have guessed like maybe volleyball or swimming. I did swim. You do seem like you're strong and athletic. Yeah, I did soccer. soccer, You're like super in. Yeah. Shape let me anything. let me ask you the question then, because you yeah. asked me why should a man put himself in that position, yeah. right? So as to be rejected and not expect the woman to do that. I think that seems obviously true without having to psychoanalyze why. But you would agree with that. So why do you think that? Oh, is this pints with Aquinas now, Matt? <laughs> we'll take this okay. clip out. Uh, we can do you have a, an opinion on? I think that women, because we are designed to carry life. You know, the, the, we share human nature and humanity, but the female can mother, the male can mother. And the, that's why the male the male is more prone towards protection and provision to so be able to empower the female to mother. Right. And so in that sense, kneeling to offer the ring and whatever, that sign of um, protection and humility before the woman is to say, I'm here to protect and provide for you, okay. even at cost to my own body. So physically nailing yes. is almost a sign of that because she's going to have cost to her body to carry that life into the world that he doesn't have. That is a great answer. I love that. I'm going to say that from now on. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. I saw you. Okay. So here's the question. How does someone know that the person that they're dating is the one? Because it sounds like for you guys, there are lots of twists and turns sort of signs for can Matt I, that he didn't can I get. Sum it up? Because I know it's like it's hard to try to fit in an entire dating thing in like twenty sure. minutes. That's what we're doing, Matt. Because it sounds Suck it up. It, <laughs> in one way it sounds like there were a lot of twists and turns, but there really wasn't. Okay. It was just two people who got to know each other and then didn't want to complicate things because it's and by complicate mm-hmm. I mean make the kind of acceptance and declaration that we were romantically attracted because as soon as we did that we knew that we would be getting married mm. yes because we're not we, we we didn't waste any time we weren't going to muck around and so that's why um how did i know I, I just wanted to marry her i wanted her to be the mother of my children i wanted to spend my life with her it was that simple i think <clears> it <throat> was yeah so so many so many things i think the fact that he loved me so much, but he loved God even more than me. I feel like he had things in right order. Mm -hmm. He loved God first and foremost. He loved me and would put me above his own needs, you know, um, and look out for me. And, um, and then I, he was my best friend. It was just like, yeah, who else would I want to do life with than my best friend? And I feel like for me, once it was, and I knew I loved him as my brother in Christ. And then once I was like, oh no, there's definitely more than this. And like, I've I've talked to other women and um and I have a friend who um yeah I was surprised she was talking to me she had chemistry with someone that was not her husband and um I didn't realize she had not had that with her husband and she I was never like, had chemistry with her husband no no I don't think so I think it was more um these are the right steps so we're going through the steps mm-hmm. um and I think there's a lot of like childhood trauma and things like that but I was like oh, no, that's like that's how I feel because she was talking to me about how she felt about this other gentleman. And I was like, but obviously you feel that way for your husband. And she didn't. And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's how we are. Like, I've always had that. Like, it, And so just realizing not everybody has that. Um, Do you think I, everybody needs that? I think to be a fully alive, awake human being, yes. I, I think agree. for me, my heart was hardened in a lot of ways. And I was very self-sufficient. And I was tough and strong. I don't need you. I don't need anyone else. I'll take care of myself type of person. And I think Matt softened me. 
And I think that was part of like him seeing my heart and like, it's embarrassing um, because it's so intimate. Um, I think I really grew in, I don't think I appreciated my femininity until being a mom and being a wife. Like, I think it made me softer. It made me um, see the beauty of the feminine and seeing that this is strength differently. It's not doing the exact same. It's not doing what he can do, but doing it better. Um, and yeah, and I learned that through through marriage, um, through letting him love me, and then through our kids too, through my body, like dying to myself every mm-hmm. time. And um, yeah. What did you um, advise your friend who came to you with that? Um, well, what that was- predicament. She's attracted to someone who's not her husband. She's feeling this. He said, I think the chemistry is the word, yeah. but she didn't have that experience with her own husband yeah but she sounds like she was validly married to her husband yes it was yes. a real marriage and she has an amazing marriage now which is amazing and beautiful her husband ended up being her knight in shining armor mm-hmm. and it was beautiful that she got to see that and then like they have more chemistry now than mm-hmm. they did their first i don't know 15 years of marriage so like it's, it's really beautiful like i think acknowledging that like if you find yourself in that situation praying about it lord help me to love my husband better like help me to desire i think a lot of moms like when we have kids we um have little ones all over us and we're constantly giving with our body through pregnancy through breastfeeding through changing diapers and it's hard to sometimes not take your identity in this or just be like i'm tapped out like these people are all literally sucking the life out of me and it's like you also have needs ah! like and so like having that time to take a step back take a deep breath you know go take a bath or go on dates and be like okay i am still i'm still wife and keeping mm-hmm. that as and primarily before yes. your mother yes like our children came from our love and so our love is what will continue to sustain them yes mm-hmm. the love is primacy yeah. And that's the order, right? It's like God first, yes. spouse next, mm-hmm. kids third. Yeah. Obviously, you, your kids' physical needs, you're not yes. going to like, I'm going to go out for a week with my <laughs> The one year old's just at the hotel, peanut butter it's sandwiches. Fine. Yeah, but meaning you, you, you really make the time for, I mean, you have to make time and space for chemistry, Yeah. You, right? I mean, you can't just, what do you got? How do you, what's your take on that? <laughs> I did not know what kind of podcast this would be. <laughs> Talk about chemistry, my love. Me or you? No, you go for it. No, no, I'm, I don't want to. Well, I, I was actually not going to talk about chemistry. Well, okay, I want, we don't not have to talk about that. it if you don't. No, 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 but I thought yeah. of something else when you said that. Okay. And so there was something that we learned when we were missionaries, and they called it conflict resolution. And so someone does something. This is how we keep the chemistry alive, Lola. Conflict resolution. <laughs> conflict resolution. I mean, keeps if, chemistry you have, alive. if you have unresolved conflict and, you're, and we're at, you know, you're at, each, your throats with, at yeah. each other's throats with your spouse, I mean, for most people, I think chemistry would be a little challenging. So yeah. I think that's totally. I think totally we're also makes sense. really big personalities. So I know some people are like, I've never thought in my marriage. I'm like, oh, I get, and then you I meet today? them. No, and I'm never. like, you guys are just so phlegmatic. Like, neither of you are, 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 are get upset over anything. And I feel like we're very passionate and we get. But I think that's even just that point you just made is so important because I think when, when talking about relationships, whether they're dating or married or whatever it is, you hear how other people relate to each other. And it's so easy to draw poor conclusions for yourself or your spouse or whatever, because their situation, their temperaments, how they show up to each other, their histories, so many differences. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I remember being told once every couple is unique, as unique as every individual is unique. So there's only so much you can do with drawing parallels. Yeah. And then what often happens is the interior workings of somebody else's relationship is usually the interior workings they want you to know about Mm. or or the things they're not most ashamed of. And so you end up comparing somebody else's outside to your inside. Not a good idea. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, but that's one thing that I think helps with our, with our chemistry is like, instead of getting upset and like sullen and like sitting in it, like bringing it up. And when you did this, this offended me, this hurt me. Um, and it's hard to do that. It's hard to both be the person to bring it up, but it's also hard for someone else to bring it up. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm the worst at saying sorry. I re- I'm so sorry that I'm so bad at saying sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Thank you. But Matt will like bring something up and I'm like, yeah, no, that was your fault. And I like dwell on a while why it was his fault. I'm like, dang it, that was my fault. I'm like, and then do you want to, do you want to say it again? And we'll, you can use the clip yeah. and no, watch then, it each morning right. I'm for saying sorry. But then what's funny is even after you've done something and you finally admit it's your fault, I find that I usually hear about it in a, in a accidental way. You're like, I was talking to my friend. I told her how, you know, how I blew up the other day. And I was, I'm like, well, you, you never said to me that you were sorry. <laughs> she apologized <laughs> yeah, to her right. friend for, to right. you. So yeah. the same thing. 
I'm sorry. I'm no, but I think yeah. she just said it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send these clips to him. He'll she use them later. Apologizing. <laughs> you help me be sorry. Thank you. Look what you bring out. I'm a therapist must, at I really heart. You know, this. it's couples no, therapy. I just yeah, I, I like just like my relationship with God is what's going to continue to help me love you. You know, like God is calling me to sacrifice and God is calling me to repentance when I fall short. You know, and so our marriage is beautiful to the degree I think it flows from our love and submission to God. And I think mm -hmm. likewise, like our relationship with our children, theirs with us is dependent on our relationship. So almost chemistry may, may be the wrong question because that might be putting too much pressure on ourselves. Um, like, it, do I feel connection. enough chemistry? Do connection. I feel enough connection? Like yeah, even connection. that, I don't know, just maybe just uh, spend, spend more time together, more intentional time together. So when we were dating in San Diego and had no money uh, and we were married with a couple of children, we would go to Costco for date nights because we couldn't afford food. That we what, hate one, samples. One so romantic. Oh, so right. not even the dollar fifty hot dog no, and soda. We, no, no, we wouldn't do that. We'd just get the free samples and walk free around. Free samples, yeah. Those are good. You can get a full meal and dessert. Yeah, you used the to. Costco I don't think samples. they do as many samples now, but back in the day. You got to go the right time of day because I, oh. I go with my boys and sometimes I'm like, we're going to get treats. And then it's like 4 p.m. and there's no treats. It has to be the time. Okay. I also think, pr I think prayer is really important as a couple. Um, but I, I find it difficult to kind of give any kind of advice because I'm afraid it'll put just more pressure on people who already feel like they have enough pressure on them. So, and that's not so, what I'm trying to do. So let me just explain to you how we pray, because I think it's really helpful to people because it's not long and it's not dramatic. I think a lot of the times we give up on things. It's because we feel like we're not good at them and we don't like doing things we're not good at because that makes us feel like failures. And so we stop doing that thing. Um, but one of the ways we pray together is it, it'll take like two and a half minutes or three minutes. So I'll put my hand on Cameron and I'll say, thank you, God, for making my wife. And I love her so much. She's very do pretty. Tone. No, it's much nicer. <laughs> and, then I'll, and then I'll ask the Lord to bless her with something, to give her peace in a particular situation or something like that. And then she'll do the same to me. And then we pray the Our Father. Mm. That's our prayer time. So good. And, I and it's really hard sometimes. Like there's been times where we, we'll go to bed and we're kind of frustrated with each other. <laughs> yeah. And you'll reach out Lord, and just put your hand on me. <laughs> <laughs> bless, this, bless this woman. And bring me patience. Man. Let him not be so mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> And I think also accepting the way you pray. So, like, Matt is so good. Can I have some of that water? Yes, please? Matt is so good. Like, morning prayer. Matt has, like, an icon wall, and he's bowing and kissing icons. There's <laughs> incense. It's amazing. He's singing all these prayers, and it's beautiful. And then I'm laying in bed, sometimes <laughs> looking in that direction, sometimes not, but kind of praying along. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus, I just love you. <laughs> and, um, and then, like, afterwards, but I never got out of bed. Afterwards, if you ask me later in the day, how was your prayer this morning? I was like, it was so beautiful. <laughs> I loved it. Like, the Lord just really showed up, and I really felt it, heard it. Matt, how was your prayer time? It could have been better. Wow. Like, he's the one bowing and he's doing everything. And I'm like, that's the different Lord have mercy. Thing. I like kind of yeah. tune in a little bit. Okay, what temperament is that then, Cameron? Saint Rose? I am very much choleric, saint. Yes. Choleric. If, I don't if have, you look up the word okay. choleric in the dictionary, there was a photo of my wife. Okay. And I'm saying too. I don't have any phlegmatic. We don't between the two of us, there's not a single phlegmatic trait. It's okay. exhausting. It's so tiring. And, you're, and I don't have any melancholic either. I'm, uh, I'm just I'm mel consumed. melancholic choleric. Okay. Yeah. So I think about death oh. way too much. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, it's just the right amount. But I think that was really good advice because, yes, I think, you know, how do you keep your marriage strong? And it was going to be a question. You guys have moved a lot. You have your podcast. You have your company. You know, you work together to some degree. You're obviously raising your kids. Do you homeschool? Cameron? I do. Yeah. You're, you're homeschooling your kids. What are the ages? Uh, 15, uh, 13, 11, 9. So okay, so you you've got a lot of kids and they're these nine to 15. So yes. these very kind of And my 15 year old years. is taller than me. He's six two How and sweet. he outweighs me. How He's sweet. Big guy. And so you're doing a lot. I think you've moved a lot in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Ever. Like you're we, always moving. So we got married in Texas. We lived in Ireland okay. for three years, Canada, San Diego, Georgia, now Ohio. So just always, not recently. So, so the question is, you know, how do you keep your marriage strong? And maybe you already answered that, but maybe a more well, you want to say on that. a good analogy. And the analogy is with friendship. If you meet somebody who you naturally get along with, and then you spend a 
significant amount of time with them. Uh, because you get along so well and you maybe share the same interests, you're never kind of forced to go deeper in that relationship. Whereas if you are kind of required to spend time with somebody who might be a different personality to you and you have to have more conflicts with them, it feels to me that the more you can have a conflict in a, in a way that's charitable and respectful, it kind of strengthens that relationship. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, this is strong enough to handle some of these blows, you know? And so I would say, how, how, how does our marriage how how was has it remained strong? Does it grow strong? I think it is through like you can always go deeper, you know. Like, and I I don't want to do that. Like, I want I want to know who you are. I want to love that beautiful Cameron, and I don't just want to love who I think you are. I don't mm. just want to love who you think you are. I want to get to know you more and more. And of course, as we continue to try to get to know each other, we're also dealing with our own defense mechanisms, our own woundedness that kind of reacts against the other, especially in those vulnerable places. You know, people often say, don't be defensive. But if you're being attacked, defensive is precisely what you should be. <laughs> and sometimes if someone's it, trying to wrestle you. Yeah, yeah. you, you have to defensive. fight back. I'm sorry. And so I think, uh, you know, that's always a constant thing. And I think for if our marriage is to remain beautiful and strong, we have to keep wrestling. Like it, it has, mm. we can't give up. We can't stop wrestling. Yeah. Physically and otherwise. Yeah. yeah maybe I, physically, but not otherwise. Yeah. I think also um, like through trials, like through trials, your marriage is strengthened. It's tested. It is hard. Um, we've had our fair share of crosses through um, through our marriage. Um, and I think choosing to love the other, even when it's hard, you know? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that, yeah, choosing to love the person, even when it gets hard. Cause I feel like, I think we live in a society where like, it's supposed to be easy. So if you don't feel in love, mm -hmm. then just stop. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yes. it's like, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So Gaudium et Spes, which is a document that came out of the Second Vatican Council Catholic Church jargon, uh, within it, it says, when God is forgotten, the creature grows unintelligible, right? So if we forget God and his revelation, then we forget who we are and what we're for. And if you meet a man who doesn't know who he is or what he's about, he can truly be said to be lost. Mm -hmm. And so I think when a, a person in this lost state, since he can't remain without a narrative, has to come up with one. And I think uh, without God, without the recognition of our own wretchedness, our own need to repent and grow in sanctity, we seek to build a utopia in our country, in our city, in our life. Mm -hmm. in, I have to have a perfect little life because that's what life's about. It's about being happy. Of course, you read St. Thomas Aquinas and he says that perfect happiness isn't possible in this life, which should just make everybody take a deep breath. Ha, ah, thank goodness. I thought there was something wrong with me. And there is, but that's not why you're not happy. It's because you don't yet, you have not yet attained the fulfillment of all your desires, namely God in the beatific vision. So I think once you can accept that you're kind of meant not to be happy, uh, and that life isn't about creating this perfect little marriage and this perfect little family. It's This is a spiritual battle. That is the context of our lives, a brutal spiritual battle against your heart. There is an enemy who hates you and wants to drag you to hell. That's that's life. Yeah. And I think if you forget that, then your life stops making sense. Yeah. And you're so, in the battle so together. So marriage is a battle. Yeah, you're yeah. in the battle together. Yes, and, and Satan and knows sometimes. your heart, he knows my yes. heart, and he's going to find the weakest spot in both of our hearts and, and collectively as a couple. Yeah, And that's where Beautiful. prayer, even that simple prayer of the two minutes, like you said, Amen. and the so saying the sorry. Yeah. You know, some of these very fundamentals. Or like mercy, like showing mercy mm. to each other. Like I think, um, yeah, we've had, you know, a lot of hard times where one of us is suffering greatly and it causes us both to suffer and um, just giving the other mercy and patience or even like we were talking we're like why why has things been we've had a lot going on it's been very stressful and it's like okay yes there's all these reasons like we can list like 10 things and like any one of those gives you stress let alone all of them at once like it's very overwhelming and it's okay we just need to give each other the grace and the mercy and just cling <laughs> to God and cling to our faith and be like, okay, you've got to get us through this. Yeah. What's and not the, turn, not think the other's the enemy. I think sometimes we think mm -hmm. that like it's his fault. Like he's the reason why. And, and I think Satan's done a great job there because it's not the two of us fighting against him. It's us turning and fighting against each other, which is ugly. There's a new baby coming in your family. Maybe it's your baby or your friend's baby or your niece's baby or your sister's baby. That baby is going to need diapers. Every baby needs diapers. Find the company that supports your values. Every life 
Diapers are the best diapers on the market. They are well-made, ethically sourced. They have diapers and wipes. But most importantly, this is a company that not only loves your baby with the product that they create, but they donate part of their proceeds back to the pro-life movement. Every Life Diaper Company is the only pro-life diaper company. Check them out today. It's everylife.com, and you can use the code LILA10 at checkout for 10% off your order. If you if you want to share, what is the hardest or one of the very hardest things you've had to face? And what did facing it look like? Well, I mean, just generally. More, it's more general, but it doesn't mean it's not, I think, insightful. And that is, I think, when we get married, um, even though we think, okay, I'm, I want to serve this person, I want to love this person, you, you obviously think you're doing it for yourself. Like, you want to have a friend, you want to have a lifelong companion, like you want to have a beautiful love life, you want to have children. Um, and so I think um, maybe as you grow in your relationship, realizing how much was about you and how much you wanted that other person, not for their own sake, but for your sake, um, and, and then having to recalibrate and go, okay, this, wow, this is, I'm meant to give my life for her, I'm meant to die for her. Oh God, that was what I signed up to. Yes, okay, I knew that. I nodded sagely when others said it, but now I'm, I'm realizing it again. And I think that's why our relationship with God is so important, right? Because if I'm upset with her or if we're fighting, God commands me to love her. And if I abandon her, I will go to hell. Um, and so quite literally. Without repentance. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, this is true. So There's I, Speaking of mercy. <laughs> so I, I don't have an option here. Um, so maybe it's the disappointments of life. Like we, we have disappointments with ourselves, right? As we, as we grow older, we look uglier as we grow older. We, we get fatter maybe or we, some stuff goes wrong with our body. Like there's disappointments in your own life. And now you've become one flesh with this other person who's also getting older and sicker. I mean, I'm, maybe, it sounds like I'm, maybe it sounds like I'm being hyperbolic, but I mean, the longer you're with somebody, obviously there's disappointments that take place in this one flesh. And so in those situations to still pursue the other and not to, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, I agree with what you're saying, but I think, so I have a lot of health issues and I think that's really hard. Um, and I think like, that's where you're coming from with growing older and healthier. Like, so I was mid thirties when I had a miscarriage that I ended up in the ICU. I went septic with, and I got crazy sick. And then when I got out of the ICU, I couldn't walk. And so I went from being a pretty healthy, normal mom to really sick. And that was really hard. And then I have all these autoimmune diseases and other things. And it's just, it's, I find that really hard for our marriage that I, there's constantly things we can't do because of me. So it's like, if I'm having a healthy day, great, we'll go do something. But if I'm not, I need to stay in this recliner and have a heat blanket on all day. And it stinks. And it's really, really humbling. And um, and like, I'm okay for it for me. Like, I'm like, okay, Lord, if you call me to suffer, I'm fine with that. I will suffer. I will offer it up. You will give me the grace. It'll be great. But I really don't like it when it affects my husband and my children. Like, that's where I feel bad. That's where I'm like, ah, oh, this is the worst. Or Yeah, but at, at our best, right? Like, at my best, I recognize that this is, this, is, this, is the, this is the cure for my own arrogance and pride. This is what will save me. And the same thing with the ways I'm across to you. Yeah. It's like, the things that we don't want in each other or the things that we wish hadn't have eventuated in our family or our living situation or whatever is the thing we have to submit to as the mm -hmm. will of God. Because I often think I would much rather God tell me to do X, Y, and Z in order to be a saint. But often it's not about doing, it's about submitting mm. to the will of God with mm -hmm. gentleness and peace and patience. And, um, and that's hard. The meek. Being meek, yeah, that's a word that I think we, it's a, not a mo one for the yeah. modern sensibility. Yeah, gentleness yeah. with others. Like I often say, like if God said, I need you to do the Bible in a year podcast, that's how you'd be saved. I could, <laughs> I could crush that. But if God says, go home and don't cause any unnecessary grief to your family, mm. I'd be like, well, I'm screwed. I don't mm. know how to do that. Like, so it's like, I think often those are the things that the Lord wants us to. So good. Mm. All right. The other thing I really wanted to hear from you guys is some parenting stuff. I've only got a almost two and a three and a half, but you know, we have a lot of parents who listen to the podcast and you're in the, you've done the elementary years, I guess. Yeah. And now you're heading into the high school years. A couple of things in particular as parents, first of all, how do you manage, you know, you're 
busy with work, I think, Matt. I mean, you sometimes say, I don't work very much, but mm-hmm. you're like pumping yes. out podcasts. I work more than I think. Yeah, you probably. You seem to have a very sanguine attitude about your choleric, melancholic life. So, um, <laughs> but anyways, nice you've, got, you've, got, <laughs> you've got all this work you're doing. You have done a lot of work too. You've got your podcast. You're also homeschooling. So how do you, how, how do you kind of set up your family life and your kind of day-to-day with your kids to even do the homeschool thing? And feel like you're doing it successfully. So I joke that I am the best at homeschooling when I pay other people to do it for me. That's a um, great strategy, Hanrin. Yeah. So I had this girl so every smart. time she had a birthday. I love Juliana was my was my helper, and every time she'd have a birthday, I'd be like, "Wait, weren't you weren't you already fourteen? Weren't you already fifteen? Weren't you?" Already? Now she's like in college, but she like would teach my kids, and we did like a homeschool hybrid, mm-hmm. and they listened to her, and they did great with her, and she had tons of patience. So she's a high she's a high school. She student? was in no no no. Oh, I think okay. she was like seventh grade when she started teaching she, my kids. <laughs> But my kids were your kids' ages, that's, right? Uh, that's and it was so smart. It was so great. So and great. And she, she loved it. She had a gift she for teaching. She loved it. Yes. And it you, to be fair to you, you were facilitating yes, it. Yes, I was facilitating it. Yes. But you, you had the just, curriculum. Was, yes, the seven-year-old. Bond I'm going to get she got, vodka in the living closet. She got the pencils out. But is this because you didn't feel like an affinity towards the teaching yes, part? It was I never, just difficult for you. I never wanted to homeschool my kids. Mm-hmm. I never thought that that's something I would do. I just, the families in which we kept hanging out with, all the families that I saw, and I was like, I want my family to look like that family. They homeschooled very differently, but they all homeschooled. And I was like, okay, maybe I could do that. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic. I have learning disabilities. I had ADD before it was cool. Um, I was like the only kid in my school with ADD. So I'm probably not the best to, but I also, I hated sitting in a desk. Mm -hmm. So I don't make my kids, they have desks now, certain ones, because they like a desk. They wanted a desk. I'm okay with that. But like, like I have one daughter who's like, mom, I found this great hand, hand, uh, handwriting workbook. Can I please, please get it? I'm like. (laughs) I mean, sure. You, yeah, you can get it. You know, so it's I'm like, not... I just want to write with a pencil on a yeah. paper. <laughs> yes, ten years like, old. No, sure, just go for it. I'm just yeah. kidding. Uh, That's seriously. So I think giving a lot of grace, but mm. like my thing with homeschooling is bare minimum is so great, and it's so much better than so many other schools. So is that unschooling? No, it's I don't quite think so. Okay. No, no, I do. Like, I actually teach my kids okay. things. And but I think the point you would make is if all you did was take your kids out of the public schools yeah. and read good books occasionally, That's better. they would it's... be head and shoulders above mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah. So that'll do. Yeah. So I, I, and oh, Sorry, I want, no, oh, I want to hear you talk about this because I think it's going to be a, just a balm to, like, herding hearts right now. The wrong question for a homeschooling mother to ask is, am I doing enough? Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the answer is no. You can't do enough. Because we're homeschooling, I mean, yeah. <laughs> effectively, because I don't plan anytime soon to put them in a school. I don't know if we will. Yeah. And I, but I'm not doing, I mean, we have a workbook that but I don't even need scribbles that. in. Yes. But he's not four yet. That's so that's great. where I'm like, okay, I, I think, but no, don't be a tiger teach mom. Teach him, <laughs> like, go outside and look at the flower. Look at the bee pollinating the flower. Have a conversation about that. Like, that's homeschooling. So our mm-hmm. old, youngest, was he five or six <laughs> when he wanted bees? Uh, six, seven. Yeah. But then so you find no, out all we, the we things let him they want to know. Like, so now he's a beekeeper. How does the tomato plant, we got a tomato plant because he got potty trained. So we got a little pot, we put a seed in it, and it grew into a plant. Okay. Now it has tomatoes on it. He wants to know how that all happened. That's and great. I'm like, the sun, <laughs> the water created this tomato plant. Yes. There's a lot of processes that I can't explain that went into this. That's but that's huge. huge. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's huge. Like, that's you homeschooling your kid and just doing that. So he was like four or five wanted bees. We waited till he was like seven, maybe. Matt got him bees. So wow. he's a beekeeper. Wow. And he loves it. He So just recently, unfortunately, some moth got into the beehive, wow. but someone was there helping him with the bees and uh, is there honey coming? yeah oh yeah wow. tons. tons it's amazing it's amazing. so delicious but <laughs> but peter was telling this guy all about oh these mouths are the worst because they eat all the and they look like and i'm like well why do the bees not and so he's answering all these questions from a bee documentary he watched right and so it's not like i taught him all that but he learned it all mm. because he was interested or like he went on this ant kick for a weekend and mm. he had like eight different ant hives that he dug up and found the eggs and the queen and all this stuff and like he's so I got him three books on ants and he just loved it and like ran with it. And so like he was talking to, so this, this is my youngest. He was talking to a friend of his. It's like, mom, have you ever heard of science? And I was like, yeah, no, I've heard of science, honey. And he's like, how come I don't do that? I've never done science. And I was like, Peter, you do science all the time, but I never made him sit down and say, and now we're going to have science. science. Entomology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boring science. Right. He goes and catches lizards. Like he's always doing science. He loves it. Um, I think you really do science when you get to 
cut up a little pig. You do that. You, what is it? You do the, do the dissection. The dissection. The birthday problem. party, or is it too? Too. Oh gosh! Did you have you guys done you, that yet? Well, we've done more than biology, that. anyways. So that's when well, really, the thing may have been it's living. It's so at terrifying. First. Oh no! Do you want me to tell you this? Oh no! You don't. Seriously? Okay. No, you keep going. You guys live in kind of in the boons, right? Well, no, um, no we're, okay. we're just on a main <laughs> Sorry, street. But I just think if there's a little country-ish thing. <laughs> I'd like to. But our, our, our son, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> our son just loves things like this. So we have friends okay. that have like butchered chickens and quails. You live in the hillsides of sure. of Ohio. We'll give it, yes. Give it that. Okay. Sure. And you have yeah. a big backyard. Yeah. We do. I know because we've been we've been over. Her. Oh My yeah, yeah. Been over. yeah. So, but you're saying you we bring... take kids hunting and oh, they get to they, butcher things. Come on. And... Our girls have never been hunting. I've never been hunting, okay. but our boys have with Matt, and they enjoy it and they talk about it. And so I think the main thing is with homeschooling, like you don't have to do enough. Like mm-hmm. like all you have to do is do you love your children. Your children are bonded to you. All moms are really good in the beginning with just that but somehow we think when they turn five or maybe you have to go back to work and they're three months old and you think now it's not my job i can't do the best with taking care of them so here this preschool for babies that will do best Mm -hmm. no that breaks your heart you don't want to do it some moms have to and i am so sorry for those moms that do i had my first in ireland i had nine months of like 90 percent of my pay maternity leave it was ridiculous and i did work the beginning years with our kids but i worked with them because we were doing missionary work so they were able to be with me Mm -hmm. but i knew what was best for them all the time i wouldn't go to chick-fil-a and let that person tell me what I should feed my kids. It's like, no, no, no. I know what they're going to have. I'm going to feed them. I'm going to take care of them. But for some reason, we've been taught in our society, when they turn five, you know nothing. Now you need this expert who can teach your child. They will teach them how to read. They will teach them how to write their name. They will teach all these things. You are not capable of doing that. I know how to write my name. I know how to read. I may not be the best qualified to teach anyone's kids. Mm -hmm. I don't have the teacher skill to manage a classroom of 30 students, Mm -hmm. but I am this child's mother and I love him and her Mm -hmm. that like, I love my child more than anyone else in the world. So who better for them to learn from than me? And we can hire the seventh grader if you, we need exactly. to. Exactly. <laughs> if you need the seventh grader. But they're in the, the home yes. and you're, you, you're involved in each step. And yes, I think that it is. You know, if people haven't been homeschooled or been close to homeschooling, I think it can seem overwhelming. And I think a lot of scary. times, whatever grade your child's in, like say you have a third grader, how how long do you do homework with that third grader? If you homeschool them, you'll just do the same amount of work. That homework, just bring it to the morning because they do better in the morning. And it's really like I, my main thing with my kids is I want to teach them what is good, what is true, and what is beautiful. That's it. I want them to know the Lord, love him, and serve him. That's it. Some of them are great at reading. Others aren't. I My oldest was dyslac- dyslexic, dysgraphia, uh, and dyscalculia. And I thought the kid would never write his name. I don't even know what two of those things mean. Right? It's his writing. He could his be a writing. doctor with his writing. Mm-hmm. But, um, but he can write his name now. But in first grade, I struggled so hard thinking he could never write. Like... I don't know. And, and then there's things that it's like, okay. But our children get to have beautiful, leisurely days with each other, don't they? Yeah. They get to lay in the And they love each chat. other. They love hanging out with each other. They love hanging out with me. People meet my kids and they just love them. Other kids love them. Your Peter loved mine. You know, like there's these. He did. He t- still talks about them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like being there for each other and you learn life skills. Like there was this one year when I got really, really sick and I um, had just gotten out of the hospital. My oldest was seven. And, um, and I just was so sick. I couldn't homeschool him. My other kids went to like this little Catholic Montessori school, but he just stayed with me. And, um, and I remember we were living at a life team camp and one of the missionaries came up to me and said, can I tell you what your seven year old did to me today? I was like, no, oh gosh, what happened? But she's like, I wasn't feeling good and I was curled up and he came over and he rubbed my back and said, I'm so sorry you're not feeling good. Are you on your period? Would you like me to get you something to eat or drink? Can I do anything for you? I, I did like, not know. Yeah, wow. Yeah. But Let's that, not say his name. It would embarrass him. I won't but, say which okay. child it was, but wow. it was a seven-year-old boy. And so this girl was just telling me, I love like how empathetic your <laughs> child is. And how, but uh, also how win. not, but also how non-shameful yeah. periods are, how right. like non-sexualized they are. Like, yes. you know, I think that's actually, there's something really important important and healthy there. Yeah. And, and just, just like learning. a naturalness to it. Yeah. And he learned empathy yeah. that year. Yeah, yeah. I tried to do math with him maybe once a week. Like I kind of failed at it that year of homeschooling, but I was trying to survive. I was trying to live. We've got to do a podcast episode, Cameron, just on the priming, the primer for homeschooling by sure. Cameron Fratt. Yes. I would because love to help you your style of homeschooling sounds right up my alley. 
and probably a lot of people listening. I mean, maybe you need a little land where you can have the ant hive on it. Yeah. So you'd have to find a way to get the ant hive. But it's, I mean, it's it's very encouraging. I kind of grew up free range like that, yeah. which I feel like it's a blessing in one of eight. And we were homeschooled that it was a lot of free range time. Oh, you'll be great then. I, I am well, so, I, I wish I was one of y'all. Like mm-hmm. my friends that were homeschooled have such peace and confidence. I've been more of a white knuckler. I don't have peace. I, I don't know that I have the peace or the confidence <laughs> really? yet. Thank yeah. You, okay. So no. I, I my parents yeah. did a great job. But they also worked hard. I feel like it's interesting. There's a lot of free range, but they did work really hard. Like we learned the Latin. Yeah. We learned even some of the Old Testament Greek or the New Testament Greek. Excuse me. See, I don't even remember. But we learned all these things because they like took the time. Yeah. You know, so there was a lot of intentionality. I think that's the part that I'm, you know, oh, can I be intentional enough yeah. to do the things? Yeah. What are the things, you know? But I'm so early in the journey. So yeah, you are. I you have so much time. And that's why I like beginning with just pull your kids out of school mm-hmm. and do nothing, and they'll be way better off. Just yeah. do that. Do, can you do nothing? I can do that. Okay, just do that. Yeah. And, and then it's then, like, can you download Audible? Can you play a few good books? Let me give you a handful of which ones. Read, okay, one more, one more birding question mm-hmm. on uh, kids. Speaking of Audible and documentaries, what's your take on screen time? Um... Screen time. I, well, I think younger years, it's not needed. None. Um Yes. No, like, I think no, ideally our, keep your children away from all screens. Yeah. We would. We have something like it, one of our kids said to someone else, they were watching a movie like, oh, you guys do Frad Family Movie Night? And they were like really excited because that's what we called it. And when our kids were really little, that's – and still now, we try to do Frad Family Movie Night one night a week and we would sit down and watch a movie as a family. But we've never really had channels or – um, so no cartoons for the kids. I no, we, we, we see again. I don't want to put stuff on other people. If you're asking us what we do, I'm happy to do that. But kind I'm not your recommendation, your advice, well, I, generally I, speaking. I, th- I think like your children. Not to shame anyone. My kids watch cartoons sometimes. So. Yeah, we our kids watch yeah. cartoons sometimes too. And sometimes yeah. it was needed. Like I, but needed I, to I take don't a shower. like. I don't. I mean, like Winnie. Some of the classic old school Disney yes. stuff. Winnie the Pooh, Jungle Book. Yeah, yeah. We I'm did, like this has yeah, some. I'm this a big fan of like. I'd say Fantasia. When I was um when I was teenager or a young kid, my parents would always get on me for not eating fruit, not eating vegetables. And, but I thought, well, I, I look back now, I'm like, well, why would I have? I mean, you had this, the pantry was stocked with like chips and the fridge had Coca-Cola. Like, so next to that, why would I do what's good for me? And I think there's an analogy there to screens. Like if I'm letting my children watch cartoons, play on iPads, why would they ever pick up a book? Why would they ever sit and look at the stars or just play with friends? So we are very strict about our children not using technology, modern technology, and we find other families who feel that way about you. Of course you wouldn't give your child a phone and that sort of thing, and we'll, we'll, we'll play with them. We'll hang out with them so that they don't feel like freaks. And and then when you get to a right age, like our 15-year-old has like a gab phone or like a really locked down. And so it's like, okay, well, now that you're here. But when we were younger, I had um, a niece that visited and she had a phone. I think they were maybe junior high age-ish, maybe like fifth, sixth grade. And I took her phone and put it on top of the fridge. And I was like, when and if you want to call your mom, you can let me know. And But we lived in Georgia and we had like five acres and there was a creek and there was trails that they would mm-hmm. run and play and she goes swimming and they just had a blast. And I remember her saying like, I don't even care about, and I was like, let me know if you want to use your phone to call your mom. She's like, I don't even care. There's so many fun things to do. I don't need it. Mm-hmm. And so I think that giving them the option, giving them, um, yeah, like we do other things. And then we're not big TV people where we don't sit and watch TV a lot. Matt, was really good about reading in the evenings to our kids. He still does. And I, like, do art with them as they're doing it. So, like, just providing other things. And, like, we have neighbors that comment. But there's always a game of tag or something going on. Our front lawn is, like, really big, right? And so there's always neighbor kids coming and doing stuff and playing. And it's just those are the other people we've chosen to be near. And they're just, yeah, interacting with each other beautifully and mm-hmm. Yeah, it helps I, to have community. Yeah, it helps to have help community, but it. I don't think that we're like anti-technology. Mm-hmm. Like if you let your kids watch mm-hmm. a movie, that's wrong. I try to choose more beautiful mm-hmm. movies to watch. Um, but yeah. I think that's encouraging because you didn't say you're, they're going to die if they, watch, if they watch some cartoons. But I think it generally, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. they decide for themselves. To- so there was some movie, I don't even remember what it was, but we decided to watch it. Mm-hmm. 
And our 15-year-old said he wouldn't watch it because he took a stand. It wasn't immoral. But do you remember what it, it was? It was like Disney pushing, pushing tranny crap on kids. Oh, wow. And so he's like, no, It's bad stuff out there. What? That's can I, tell you what's... I think it was a movie I saw, and I didn't think it was bad. Can I say it was really encouraging? Oh. He's, mo- he's like hardcore. He's very, yeah, That's he's nice. hardcore, which is great. It's, it's like, good. Right, because the, the modern woke propaganda mm. is as off-putting to the younger generation today as, let's say, Christian bad propaganda was in the 80s and 90s. I think if they're for, if they've got a good ground level, you know, they've they've developed yes, a sort yes. of a taste for the good stuff. Yes, yes. Because they've been exposed to good stuff as yeah, kids. If they've been exposed Z, to trash their whole life. It's hard. Calibrated are wonderful. Mm, I agree. When they're not, it's a lot of. <laughs> Gen Z. There's no. I, I, love Gen I don't Z. think you can find a lukewarm Gen Zer. Like you just. Yeah, have hot it's and cold. true. That's our experience. It's true. Guys, this has been awesome. We should do this again. Come back out to California. For Bring the kids. Us. Yeah. Yeah, do some some us, yeah. playing. I mean, we've got it. We we don't have the uh, live on the not the rural. I know I said you guys live in the boondocks, but we don't have an ant farm in our backyard. But or I know beehive. Peter would love to play with Peter again. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. So thanks so much. Thank and you. then your podcast. Where can people find them? Uh, I think podcast app. Okay, maybe, or YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Dumb dumb find question. myself. All right, look what's up the name? What's the name? Among the lilies. Not just look what up. was the other one? Vodka in the linen closet. Yeah, I ended not up vodka in the linen just closet. Just among the lilies. <laughs> among the lilies. It. You'll find it. Yeah. And then yours yeah. is something about like a cup with a, a cup priest with or something. Augustine. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> Cups with Augustine. Okay. Angels Augustine. I think it's called. I forget. Okay, pints with something. Mm-hmm. That guy, famous, very famous guy. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Lila Rose podcast. It was so fun to have Matt and Cameron on the show. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a review on the podcast app if you think of it. That will help the podcast reach more people. And if you haven't already joined the Patreon community, please do. That will help the podcast reach more people. And we'll see you guys next time.